Oh no. No, <laughs> oh, yes. Hi, people. Come on in. Binge, 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 binge. Good, good. I'm Natalie Abrams, senior writer at Entertainment Weekly. Now, back in 2012, it all started with one man. He spent five years on an island and returned to protect his city. From there, Arrow, you know, the CW's flagship series has now grown to add a speedster in The Flash, the Maiden of Might and Supergirl, and now a ragtag team of legends. So how did we get here? Well, let's bring him out to find out. She started off as the canary on Arrow and now has become the leader of the Scarlet Speedster on The Flash, Grant Gustin. He will not fail this city as the Green Arrow, Stephen Amell. She's now taking flight on the CW as Supergirl, Melissa Benoist. And he's the brains behind it all, executive producer, Greg. <laughs> all right, guys, it's so great to see you all here today. Uh, but you guys have actually been working together pretty often recently, shooting this uh, four-way crossover. Can you talk about what it was like to get to team up and work all together? A lot of leather. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I mean, it was, it was really cool. We got, we, you know, we had, like, our individual scenes. But then we had scenes where there were, like, 20 superheroes there in this big airport. And I also just like this week picked up a really intimate scene. I've been spending more time with you than I'd like. Sorry. <laughs> it was a nice scene. Uh, Melissa, this is, you know, Supergirl teamed up with The Flash last season, but this is your first really big crossover with everyone. Uh, what was it like getting to work with everyone and, and how does Kara get along with, with all these characters? Um, well, I think Kara just wanted to be accepted and be like a part of the cool kids. Um, and I felt cool. Um, but it's, she had like good interactions with almost everyone there. These two are funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grant, uh, Grant, how about for you? I mean, you've done a couple of crossovers yeah. now. How do you think this one differs from what we've seen the past couple of seasons? Uh, well, it's just a lot bigger, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, last year was Flash and Arrow, and now it's, yeah, I mean, we have like 17 characters in multiple scenes. and. Uh, Greg, we know the Dominators are sort of going to be the villain of the crossover. Is there anything you want to tell us uh, about the crossover? Um, um, well, we're very excited for everybody to see it. Uh, they all have their own continuing kind of storylines through it, and uh, it, but it really does very much feel like in the middle of the whole season, like a three-hour movie. Uh, it starts a little bit at the tail end of Supergirl, because she's in a whole, for those of you that watch, she's in a whole other universe on a whole other planet. So there's some, uh, you know, having to go get her. Uh, fun little thing. Uh, we, uh, we found an exterior shot for us on TV when they always cut out to the exterior of the building. Uh, that looks a lot like the Hall of Justice, so we like that. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, Steven, during the crossover, we're going to get the 100th episode of Arrow. Congratulations, first off. Uh, what does it mean to you to, <laughs> to you hit this him. milestone? I mean, <clears throat> I'm incredibly grateful for everything. Get enough Arrow during the 100th episode. To me, this... The hundredth episode basically had to be a crossover, it, because it's sort of emblematic of <clears throat> everything that we've been able to create and foster, and you know help grow. Obviously, all of these shows stand on their own, but um, the crossover and Aliens and watching Oliver react to Aliens is one of my favorite things that I've ever got to do. But uh, it gives us a chance to do something for the hundredth episode with all the people that I got to work with, or, or hadn't worked with for a very long time on the 100th episode, I was very grateful. Uh, so, Greg, looking back to the beginning of Arrow, what do you remember of casting Steven, and then eventually casting Katie, casting Grant, and, and Melissa? Well, um, it, Melissa, Steven, Grant were all the first people that walked in for the part. Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> we also have an incredible casting director named David Rapp. Uh, who also, for having loved the, the comic books growing up and the characters growing up, you're really looking for, I think, the, the spirit and the heart and soul of the character more than necessarily someone looks like this or 
has this kind of affect or whatever. And, uh, and they each really, I think, embody so much of, uh, of what we see these characters as. And they're all, you know, they all, ha knowing each of them and working with each of them, they really are, in a lot of ways, my personal hero. So I, I think they have that attribute in inherently, and I think it shows on the screen. What are you besides? There was a character named Lisa, and and I, I remember going in there and just like sitting down on the ground, and they were like, uh, "Do you want a chair?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, I'm good." <laughs> and then, is that yeah, I did. Is the, that true? Yeah, I did the the first like scene on the ground. Okay, I'm fine. Leave me. And then I remember actor. thinking like, "Oh, that nothing else is like it's done. I didn't get the part." And I got a call, and they're like. We need you to come in. Stephen and Mel is coming to town. Really nervous, uh, and I was like, kind of amping myself up. And then I just see this guy like getting out of his car, and he's like, Ugh. like, and I was like, uh, Mr. Mel. I was a big fan of Katie from Mad Men. It's a true story. So it's like I was excited to meet her, and uh, I remember my audition. I was I was in a room, and again, I was the first guy that was in. So Greg apparently had said. All right, because I was being, I was, the audition was at his office. Room the first time with four people, and then when I came back in, there were like 20 people there. Did the exact same scene, and that was it. What about you for, uh, for you, Grant? Um, it, was, it was a six week process. It was an initial audition with David Rappaport, and then they brought David Nutter in, who directed it, and then I think Greg and Andrew, and then multiple screen tests. I did one screen test with Emily, uh, like on the service, and yeah, it worked out though, so. <laughs> and you had a long casting process too, right? Yeah, mine was very similar to Grant's. I think I, my initial audition was two years ago, Monday, on Halloween. Oh. It was a Saturday morning <laughs> that I went in and I thought there was no chance in hell. I was like, I can't play a superhero. <laughs> and I thought I was too big of a goofball, but mm -hmm. I, I think it was a couple months. It was like two and a half months that it... And it feel in this position? I think she's kind of naturally been backseat leader with Rip, so she's kind of used to it a little bit, but... Now that it's actually her responsibility, I think it's kind of stressful because now everything's your fault. Uh, if something doesn't work, it's, it's your fault. If someone gets hurt, it's your fault. So dealing with this new kind of level of responsibility. And she's kind of got to get her act together because, you know, she's just hanging out with like... Cap Timeline upside down with Flashpoint. Uh, Grant, how much do you think Barry may feel guilty or how is that harboring with, you know, those feelings harboring with him like moving forward yeah. as we see stuff like Caitlyn yeah. <laughs> getting powers because of it? Barry's got a lot of feelings, you know? He's, he's a sensitive guy. Um, so, uh, he, yeah, Joe's other daughter, yeah. Um, he... Uh, you know, he, he beats himself up, I think, quite a bit. So I, I everything, and, and as soon as he starts to realize what the repercussions are, that he's erasing all these relationships and these moments from not only his life, but other people's lives that he cares deeply about, I, uh, yeah, he, it weighs on him heavily. Greg, what came with the decision to shake up things so fundamentally, and do you see yourself ever going back to that original timeline? Uh, I'm not sure that we can, given yeah. what we've established, but, um, you know, I think the shows are always evolving and growing and and we we like to at the end of the year we take doctors i think it's less rewarding to just watch and uh hopefully uh, probably less rewarding to play uh and so uh i think uh, we like to you know grow ourselves and grow the characters and, and so that was it was one of those decisions now melissa we're gonna get a supergirl flash musical crossover this year <laughs> How nervous are you to, to be singing on, on the shows? I, I, I wouldn't say I'm nervous. Are you so we could what? Sing something. Oh, yeah, that's not happening. I'm sorry. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally not going to happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> but how are you guys feeling about doing that episode? I don't know what to expect yet, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, I don't either. So I, I think the possibilities are endless of what we could do and what's there. And yeah, it, I can't even fathom what it would look like or feel like. Just putting trust in the guy. <laughs> <So. laughs> 
Uh, now. I mean, like, Universal Soldier and He-Man and Rocky IV were three of my favorite movies as a kid. So working with him, uh, he brings a different energy to the show. I mean, the first time that we meet him, we meet him in episode 506, it just feels... It just feels different, it, even the way that it's shot. He has this big speech, and it's just one long, continuous shot. And uh, he came prepared. He was invested in the show. He's excited. He's, um, he's... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Supergirl. Yeah, Supergirl. I, I, yeah, I have always been curious. I don't want to start an argument on this stage here, but who do you think would win between your four superheroes? Supergirl. She's got uh, heat vision. And she's an alien. She flies. <laughs> what do you think, Steven? Experience. <laughs> <laughs> There Here it we is. go. There, it is. there we go. Um, so I've always been curious, you know, you guys, uh, what does it take to actually suit up as a superhero? Can you talk a little bit about going through that stunt training, how hard it is to put on those costumes? My costume's easy. <laughs> Super easy. Yeah, I mean, technically I can put mine on alone. I have someone that helps me, like... <laughs> but that's it, so... It's, yeah. yeah, mine is definitely not a one-person job. It's... We get to do all the any rehearsals and stuff for the fighting and we did a big sword fight in our last episode and that was really fun so that's yeah, actually one of my favorite parts yeah you should check out katie's instagram because you put up a video right of like about yeah that was awesome oh thanks katie kicks ass oh sam is back by the voice activation for you to win your prizes so you can go back there after the panel uh first let's start up right here go ahead <laughs> At the movie theater. Have you guys ever raced before? And if not, will you guys race? And who do you think will win? Do you mean Melissa and Grant? Or like Just racing. More like a cool stroll. <laughs> I had an effects guy when we were on a track last season that wanted to race me. His name's Scotty. And he wanted to race me. I was in my suit. And he swore he was going to smoke me. And he was like wearing a like, work belt and stuff and didn't want to take it off. And I smoked him. And um, yeah, I don't know why he wanted to race me. That's the only time I've raced someone in the suit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got, uh, who do we got over here? There we go. Hi, uh, my question is for Greg, actually. Um, journalism has always been a big part of superhero comics. So I wanted to know how will you incorporate Iris's journalism arc into this season. <laughs> yeah, I so, mean, you know, ever since she became aware of, obviously, Barry's secret toward the end of season one, she's been more integrated into the, the mystery of it all. But, you know, she has her own dreams and her own pursuits in terms of journalism. And, I mean, the classic trope in the comic books is always, like, that gets the journalists into trouble, you know? And then they usually need to get saved. But I think what we do on our show is she can save herself plenty. Uh, but she, she's very helpful. Uh, she lives on her own now, but, but we do deal with uh, her living situation in terms of Barry and her uh, later in the year. Oh, we got another one over here. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, my name's Ebony. I'm super excited. Melissa and Grant, I've loved you since Glee. Katie, you've always been awesome. And I cannot believe I get to speak to Stephen and Mel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dove on social media. I mean, <clears throat> for me, it's been really interesting. And, and John Barrowman explained this to me during the first season. He said, you know, the first year of a show, you're like a guest in people's homes. And then the more that you come back for a second season and a third season, you become like family. You become expected. And I think that, I mean, the best example of that is not with Arrow, the best example of that is with Supernatural. The person the PR of the CW was like, you know, you should really, you should start pushing that. And I looked at her and I go, Suzanne, Suzanne, we both know that Supernatural is winning. And of course they did. And so, you know, it's just, it's, it's, been, it's been great because I mean, I've, I've met people, I've seen people grow up. It's, it's been a crazy journey getting to know the fans. And I, I, re I hope that it continues because, you know, I heard Jared and Jensen say it, and it, it really rings true. 
without you and with well, Stephen, I really admire your online presence and your connection to the fans, so thank you. Um, but my actual question is for everyone, and it's what was your first introduction to superheroes in general? Was it a comic book, and when, and what was it? For me, it was Christopher Reeve's Superman. I was like, probably like six, and yeah, it created a deep, lifelong obsession for me. Same for me. I was not six, <laughs> but same for me. It's so scary to me. Batman and Robin? Nipples on the bat suit? Yeah. <laughs> Nipples on the bat suit. <laughs> Mine was Batman too, but Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. With, yeah. Uh, Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer and the penguins scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah. yeah. Mine was the original TV show Batman from the 60s. Which I watched in reruns. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Still. He looks uh, amazing. Over here. Hi. Um, were you, like, really disgusted by the mouse? Because it kind of looked... Yeah, that's right. Two things scare me. <laughs> Zerks, which are these little explosions that go off on your chest, and mice. <laughs> I didn't like it. I was not a fan. They brought in a mouse trainer and everything. I didn't trust that person. Okay? I, I, I was like, they were like, I said to them before, I'm like, set this shot up, get the camera move, be ready, because I'm doing it one time. In the heart. So it's, there's a little explosion that they strap to you. Isn't that a squib? Yeah, I thought that yeah, was... Yeah, sorry, a, a squib, not Zerk. a Zerk. Zerk are the things they fi actually fire around you. Yeah, we're, we're not allowed balls. to use those on our show because one hit, hit me in the head. Times, yeah. 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 No. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, a little squib. And it's terrifying because it's a little explosion that goes off on your chest and your first inclination when that happens is to look down and that's the opposite of what you want to do. You want to look up. So they, f they terrify me. Yeah, they change a lot. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it's an ever-changing experience. Yeah. The yeah, I mean, you become, you become really, you spend more time with people on your cast and your crew than you do with your family in it's a lot of instances. Evolving, rela constantly evolving relationships. Katie yeah. consistently comments that I, I basically behave like a 12-year-old boy at all times <laughs> backstage, yeah. much to her chagrin. Vacation, Steve. <laughs> I think it, it is. We just a long time. Like we'd have to see each other a bunch of times until finally we were like, "Oh my God, we should be best friends." <laughs> <laughs> Little Flash. Me and my twin sister watched The Flash and Supergirl. But I have a question for Flash. When would they bring back? <laughs> when would they bring back another bad speedster? <laughs> Very soon. The follow-up. Is it the season 19 Wells or 17? I mean, I'm not... No I spoilers. Mean, Earth. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about this speedster who's coming in? Uh, it's, his name is Savitar, and he's the god of motion. Uh, so Flash is up against his biggest foe yet. Nice. He's scary. How about another flash here in the center? Own stuff about, I didn't know a lot, but I knew like the gist when I auditioned for the role. But, and I started reading the comics as soon as I started auditioning. Um, so I had a feel for the character already. Um, so it was kind of a very gradual, um, I don't know, kind of uh, view of him. Because I had to build it as I developed the character. And I, I think we've kind of developed our own version of Barry that's never really existed. So, I don't know. I put a, you know, a lot of myself into it, but in the yellow right here, because he's, yeah. All right, let's go. Shout it out. Yeah. <laughs> Impulse? No immediate plans. <laughs> Sorry. He's so Sorry, sad. Bro. He just crushed him. <laughs> you can go home now. <laughs> Let's get another further back one. Go ahead, you, you two girls right there. She said, when is Elicity getting back together? I'm not sure, I can't say anything about that. But I mean, obviously they work together every week, right? And they're very close. And uh, I can't imagine anyone that would ever be in either of their lives that would replace the other person. Yeah, we, oh. haven't, we haven't really discussed like our relationship yet this season, but we, we, we do discuss um, Oliver and Felicity discuss a little bit about the relationship and you know where it is in this week's episode. Yeah. Fun scenes. 
Sarah will take care of your girl for you. <laughs> Hi, um, f uh, this question is for Melissa. We flew all the way from Chicago. Oh, and, uh, awesome. I just wanted to ask, what are the similarities of Supergirl and uh, Melissa? And can you please sign my Funko Pop? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I have many more similarities with, actual, with Cara Danvers in her cat co glasses wearing dorky self like that is very similar to me i don't know if it's just because my personality is closest to the character okay we've got one more question i'm going to go to arrow here in the center green arrow, green arrow come on <laughs> hi i'm anthony and hey, i have anthony. a question for steven amell my best favorite actor that i want to meet for the first time all right so um, let's see. What do you like, the arrow or the green arrow? Because I know that Rachel... Chance recently to play that sort of earlier version of the character that we saw in, you know, in the earlier seasons. And I gotta say, I kind of miss that guy. You know what I mean? And I feel like that version of the character was very two-dimensional. And then the counterpoint to that character was a little bit two-dimensional. Killing, not killing, no in-between. So I like, I like the version that we have now because he just seems more three-dimensional and more like dealing with the situation as it comes, you know, I'd like to think and hope and with the support of everyone here that we would keep going. But, but there is an end point this year that we could only do in the fifth season and I hope we do it. Real, no spoilers. Real talk though, how excited will you be to finally put away that wig and not have to wear it again? Think about it every day. Thank you guys so much for coming out today. The Flash.